like to welcome you to this edition of EMU Today TV. My name is Mark Esley, and I am your host. And I'd like to wish you a very happy new year. All the faculty, staff, and students, welcome back for the winter semester. And uh, we're so pleased to have you join us this month for this edition of EMU Today TV. And in the first segment, I'm so pleased to be welcome. Uh, I'd like to welcome Dean Ryan Eberly Yoder's sleeve. And uh, he is the Dean for the College of Education appointed to that position back of May of last year. Ryan, thanks for joining me. How are you doing? Thank you, Mark. It's great to be with you. I appreciate it. Absolutely. It's great to have you. As we get started, let's just talk briefly about your background. Where do we, we you know, where do we get you from? Where did you come from? And, and what brought you to Eastern Michigan University? Yeah, thanks. Uh, most previously, I was at the University of Denver, where I was serving as Associate Dean in the College of Education there. I had worked at Denver for a total of 10 years prior to, to joining the team here at Eastern Michigan University. And, uh, and it's been a fantastic transition since, uh, joining a fantastic college like the College of Education here at a real mission-driven institution like EMU. And, and what was the appeal? What brought you to EMU from, after certainly being 10 years at your previous uh, uh, university? Yeah, I, you know, I, I reached a point in my career where I was really interested in taking that next step in leadership in higher education. And what was, I think, most important to me was finding a place where the institution's mission was felt and alive and really uh, believed in and pursued across the entirety of the university and could be reflected in the work of the College of Education in particular. As a, as a real mission-driven leader myself, that became really important. When I was visiting here at Eastern Michigan University, it was really evident from every single conversation that I had uh, with everyone involved in that visit that, that Eastern is truly uh, a, a university of and for opportunity. My own research trajectory always uh, focused on, on issues of educational opportunity. <clears throat> particularly for historically marginalized communities. And so the fit here just felt really natural and, and like the kind of place that I would want to, to be at and, and with the kind of, of people that I would enjoy working with. Uh, that was really brought home in my conversations with the folks here in the College of Education, as well as with both President Smith and Provost Longworth, who very clearly have a strong track record of, of aligning resources to reflect that mission. Yeah, and so we're talking about the College of Education. For those who may not be aware exactly, what does the College of Education focus on? Oh, thank you. Well, as the, as the name suggests, we do generally uh, prepare future teachers, but mm -hmm. we do that in multiple ways. We have both uh, teacher education programs for early, el for elementary education, for early childhood education, for secondary education, and we collaborate across the entire university to prepare folks like future high school English teachers, high school math teachers, science and social studies, world languages, et cetera. Uh, and we also do uh, a special education. We were the first university and the first college of ed in the nation to offer a bachelor's degree in special education. And we're really proud of that legacy of leadership here, uh, both in the college of ed and at EMU. We also, though, at the graduate level, prepare folks to become speech and language pathologists uh, who are truly clinicians working in both healthcare as well as educational settings. We also prepare future principals and superintendents and central office staff in schools through our educational leadership programs. We do work with higher education administration, policy, and student affairs workers in particular. These are master's degree students who are seeking to become the folks working on college campuses that support students in their success uh, throughout undergraduate and graduate experiences. And then we have really strong counseling programs, including clinical mental health programs, uh, college counseling, as well as school counseling programs. So while education is our title, our reach and our scope is rather broad. Let's go way back. It used to be, the, I believe, and I'm not wrong, uh, Michigan Normal College, I believe. Is that right? The way Eastern, back in the day. Yes, yes. So the College of Ed is actually really the 
uh, the, the centerpiece of where it all started for Eastern in the sense that Eastern Michigan University initially was founded as the Michigan Normal School. And Thank normal you. schools back in the day were the institutions that were established publicly to prepare teachers for, for public schools across the state. So education has been a part of EMU since uh, the founding of EMU. And in fact, we have the Gettys School, uh, one room schoolhouse here on campus still, which is just across the street from the Porter building where I'm joining you from today. Yeah. You know, and, and we think when I was a student at EMU going back just a couple of years ago. <laughs> <laughs> just a couple. Yeah, we and I, I remember that there was a reputation of EMU being a teacher's college back in those days. Talk about the evolution from that core mission. And you kind of touched on it earlier with the other programs, but talk about the evolution of it being a teacher's college to where we are today. But here's the little twist in light of all the changes that have taken place over the last several years in the educational field? That's a great question. Uh, we in the college are doing a lot of work right now to try to recognize and understand our legacy of leadership, the shoulders upon which we stand, and how we're going to steward that legacy into the future. And um, there, for a long stretch of time, Eastern Michigan University uh, was graduating and preparing the highest number of certified teachers in the state of Michigan. Today, uh, we don't have hard numbers on this, but based on those former numbers, it's safe to bet that there are more Eastern graduates working as certified teachers across, e across Michigan's public school settings than any other institution. We take that very seriously and are quite proud of our alumni that are spread all across the state. If you combine that with the numbers of principals and superintendents and, and paraprofessionals that have spent some time with us, um, then, then the numbers of Eastern alums reaching children and families across the state of Michigan just exponentially grows. And so on that legacy, we are now building out what's the next iteration of our, of our leadership legacy in the state, focusing largely on things that have been our strengths for a long time, that we're initiate that we are trying to build stronger infrastructure to support for the longer term. And these to me are things like our the fact that we provided leadership in the notion of community schools way back in the day. And some of our emeritus faculty, like Dr. Jackie Tracy, who is still active in, in Michigan um, as, as, a, as a known educator and as a leader, um, as well as uh, 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 Dr. Nora Martin, um, they really championed notions of what special education looks like, back to our leadership in special ed, as well as what the community schools as a notion can look like. And what community schools as a notion means is really that you think about the school as not only an anchor in the community, but reflective of the community. And so the way that you do schooling needs to be contextualized within its local communities as well. And that is a springboard to serving all kinds of different needs that we've recognized and learned over time in the field of education that go unmet when we think that there's only one way to do teaching and learning, or when we think that there's only one way to organize a school or a district. And so from that, that, that antecedent, we've grown out into much broader notions that are more productive, more powerful, in serving more families better than ever before, particularly as education has become far more complex, which is why the suite of programs that we offer in our college makes so much sense. Because now we know that young people and their families as they go through schools need a whole lot more than a teacher who's expert at teaching and learning processes. They also need counseling and mental health services. They also need support from a speech and language pathologist and people who understand learning from the multiple dimensions that go on across human development in that schooling in that schooling period. And we also need leaders who know how to organize for that. And we need folks who can pick up that baton when students move into post-secondary settings as well. You just touched a while for the goal of the conversation. Teachings become much more complex. 
And, and certainly, let's look even in the last three years with the pandemic and the technology. Technology has been around for a long time. Um, certainly, and I'm an, I, everybody knows I'm an instructor in the College of Business at East Michigan University. Uh, but as you look at the changing dynamics in the marketplace, uh, it, it sounds like the, the, the university is maintaining its relevance by offering these other services, such as the mental health and the counseling and other things that go beyond just the core essence of it. And as you position that in the marketplace, how is that resonating with potential or prospective students wanting to get into the uh, College of Education at EMU? One thing that that we like to talk about in the College of Education is, yes, we prepare you to become a new certified teacher or we prepare you to become a new uh, principal or a superintendent or a new counselor or a new speech and language pathologist. But in addition to those careers, those jobs, we're preparing you to transform the world through education. We as a society rely on schools and the broader educational enterprise to, as something fundamental and foundational to how we've organized human ways of knowing, being, and doing. Uh, you can't have a society without a robust educational sector. And so therefore, if we want to help address broad issues like poverty, like racism, like sexism, we need strong educators who understand how teaching transforms the world, how supporting students transforms the world, how, how making sure that families are empowered to co-direct their children's education transforms the world and supports democracy in particular as a political entity worth pursuing. To put it more simply, we prepare educators, but we pre prepare educators who see education as that vital foundational institution in society. We have uh, about a minute, less than a minute remaining. So I wanna give you a chance in 45 seconds or so to say whatever you wanna say your closing pitch to those viewing in today. Well, I just am so proud, even in my short time here at, at EMU thus far, uh, I've been so impressed at the not just the hard work and the dedication of our staff and our faculty and our students, but the passion behind our innovations. And we have a Grow Your Own program that is uh, supported in part by the state of Michigan in collaboration with Washtenaw Intermediate School District here, our, our home county here in Washtenaw County. Uh, to prepare to to help paraprofessional educators across the schools in Washtenaw County to become certified special education teachers, and that's one of the ways in which we are meeting the need of the state, and one of the ways in which I think helps highlight how we are unafraid to innovate what a, a teacher preparation program can look like and needs to do in order to remain relevant for the challenges that education faces today. Um, that 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 effort at innovation, combined with that passion of leadership and transformation, is something that runs rampant throughout our college, and I think is really reflective of the ethos of what it means to be part of Eastern Michigan University today and our opportunity-driven mission. Dean Ryan, go to sleep. I want to thank you very much for joining me. Welcome again. I know you've been here for several months. Keep up the great work. And what we're going to do is to take a quick break and show you, talk about education, we're going to show you the multicultural graduation that just took place back in the fall. We'll be right back. The purpose of the multicultural graduation celebration is to acknowledge the achievements of graduating students of color, both domestic and international, at EMU. To the class of 2022, you have displayed a tremendous amount of resilience and grit. We know that this moment means a lot to you, but also to your family and community. The faculty here present today are among those who understand that the mere presence of students of color in places of higher education is a form of resistance. Merriam-Webster Dictionary defines perseverance as the ability to achieve something despite opposition, failure, or setbacks. 
So, congratulations. The same drive, the same determination that you demonstrated to get you to this point is necessary to keep as you progress on. Basically, keep the same energy. You counted on you. It was your hard work, patience, and dedication, shout out to Nipsey Hussle, that got you to this moment right now. And for that, you should be proud of yourselves because it is the sum of those things that will allow you to soar wherever your paths may take you in this world. Every room you walk into, you make your presence known. And at any moment, you start to get tired of performing at that rate of excellence, at that rate of perfection. You remember the fire that is ignited within you today. Welcome back to EMU Today TV. I hope you enjoyed that video presentation of the recent multicultural graduation that just took place this past fall. Congratulations to all the graduates. We're proud of you. And we want you to go out and certainly make a difference. And uh, speaking of making a difference, it's a major event, 60 years of civil rights uh, that's going to be coming up. And I'm so pleased to welcome Dr. Barbara Patrick. And she's the professor and department chair of political science also director of EMU Civil Rights and Social Social Justice Center here at Eastern Michigan University. Barbara, thanks for joining me. How are you doing? Yes, thanks for having me. I'm doing wonderful. It's so glad to have you. And you know, here we are in January, and uh, certainly MLK days are taking place this month, and there's a lot of discussion about, you know, certainly civil rights and, and certainly around the MLK days. But briefly talk to us as we jump into the 60 years of civil rights conversation, but talk briefly about uh, your role as a director of civil rights as the so Social Justice Center at EMU. Yes, so this project began as a part of an ongoing process in the Department of Political Science where we started six years ago with a course entitled the Civil Rights Travel Course, where we took students down south to give them I want to say somewhat of an authentic experience with engaging in the environment where civil rights activists took it to the streets of Mississippi, Alabama, and Tennessee, and to have the opportunity to meet with some of the activists who were presently working there then. And so as a part of that, Dan Offerman, who has been a great supporter of our department and the college, decided to invest some funds to allow us to do a pilot project to look at how we could expand that work at EMU. And so what we did is we set up a pilot project to look at what type of services and activities a civil rights center at EMU could engage in. And this led us to the 60 years of civil rights from the church house to social media. The struggle continues as we've looked at some of the issues of past civil rights movements and some of the current and ongoing civil rights issues and social justice issues, or civil rights movement and social justice issues that we are engaging in today. That's phenomenal. So, so you actually have the opportunity uh, to take students down south to experience what was yes. experienced way back in the day. What is what has been their reaction as you take them down? South to experience uh, what the forefathers, so to speak, went through? That's an excellent question. So initially, I didn't know what to expect because for some of the students, when once they heard they were going to Mississippi, they put their guard up because they said, oh, no, I don't know what we're walking into. And they were expecting maybe the South of the 50s and 60s. But a lot has changed there. But um, the thing that has impressed me the most with that journey that students take is I've never met a student who has gone into that environment, had authentic conversations with some of the activists of the past and present and come back as the same person. They mm. all come back very highly motivated, very touched by the experience, more aware of social dynamics and more, I wanna say engaged and aware of their personal responsibility to make the society in which we live a better place. Okay, so it's got to be almost like a, and for the lack of a better phrase, a an emotional religious experience to go down there. And I, I'm sure you're talking about Dr. King, and, I'm, and you're talking about the, the, you know, the freedom writers and things like that that happened in the South. And until now, those students, of course, they've read about the history books, but to actually go down there and experience it's got to be a very emotional experience for them as well. I think. 
Yes, um, for many of them to stand on the soil where a lot of these people have stood. And the other part of that I think that is so moving is a lot of the people who were foot soldiers of the civil rights movement still live there. And mm. so they tell the story of being the first black police officer in a majority white city and what that experience was like or what it was like coming home from Vietnam as an African-American soldier or participating in a protest or being frightened because there have been bomb threats on the church that you are attending or setting up the freedom schools for Freedom Summer. And so mm-hmm. to hear the authentic stories from people who engaged in the movement, I think is life-changing for the students. Yeah. And so let's talk about this. This uh, I think you have a series, right? A series yes. that's taking place. Let's kind of segue and, and kind of give the viewer an overview of this series and, and what exactly is it? What can they expect from it? Yeah. So the series is designed to somewhat encapsulate what the Civil Rights Center will be all about. And a part of that is acknowledging history, making people more aware of that, but also engaging civil rights and social issues of today. And so it's a three-part series. We held the first event in October, and it was called A Conversation with the Elders. And essentially what we did in that conversation was we invited in three activists from the civil rights movement of the 1960s. And um, the keynote speaker was from the state of Mississippi, whom is a part of our travel course experience, but he was instrumental in setting up freedom schools in Mississippi. And I don't know if people are familiar with the Mississippi Freedom Democratic Party that interrupted the Democrats convention in 1964. So he was the vice chair of that party at that time. And so we allow students to listen to the stories and just ask questions about how that particular movement was organized and why it was successful and what the goals were. Part two that um, we're seeking to hold on January 25th in the Student Center is we have invited in Mr. Leroy Clemens. And I often tell people maybe the best way for me to sum this up for people to connect with is the movie Mississippi Burning. And in that movie, they talk about the murder of the three civil rights workers in Mississippi that kind of really put a spotlight on some of the injustices down south. So Mr. Clemens led a movement that was instrumental in getting the guy who murdered them, Edgar Ray Killens, fought to justice in the early 2000s. And he comes or he's going to come and do a talk about that process, what it did to the city the racial healing that it bought by having those conversations and how they organize that. And the third and final piece is designed to match part one of the program. So part one, we allow people to have conversations with activists of the 1960s who were instrumental in that movement. Part three is all about the present and the future. And we are inviting in young activists from Ypsilanti and Detroit who can speak to the issues on the ground today and how they are organizing to make a difference in our society or our community and hopefully inspire other young people to engage in the work. I have to say, wow. I mean, as you're talking, you know, I'm reflecting on what you're saying here. And so, so many times we think of the civil rights movement, civil rights education, uh, and, and I say this very respectfully, of course, we talk about Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And we talk about Rosa Parks and, and the Jesse Jacksons and the Andrew Youngs of the world. Uh, I think the beauty of what you're doing here is, like you said, you're going back down to Mississippi and you're broadening the lens and you're showing that there were other people involved uh, yeah. in this movement that, that's you know, going back 60 years of civil rights, although it goes back even further than that in terms of a historical perspective from our country's perspective. Yeah. And I think that's a fascinating tale to hear it from other people who have, you know, they've had their boots on the ground. And I think the students probably appreciate hearing it directly from them too, yeah. especially someone that's still living and they've experienced that situation. Talk about that as well. Yes, um, I think that is the greatest piece. So I graduated from a small HBCU in Mississippi called Rust College. And so EMU and Rust are partnering to do some work together. But when we take students to Rust, we allow, so there's a two-part deal there. One, there are a lot of activists who still work at Rust College 
And so they get to hear the stories of those activists. Um, the former president would often tell stories about how he and a young college student from the Midwest, he was a white, who was a white male were riding together and who were terrified for their lives because they were pulled over by the police for carrying books to the freedom schools. And so they walk through that process and they hear his story. Um, one of the siblings of one of the Little Rock Nine is actually the spouse of a, fac a faculty member there. And she goes through and tells the story of this is what it was like to watch my sibling go through this process. And this is how it altered her life or to meet someone who opened up the first African-American record store. I mean, there are so many wonderful tales. And then there's the integration piece where they see that it was a community that came together to bring about change. And, and for those students to see these are everyday folk yeah, who say awesome. we have to get up and we have to go and we have to fight to make a difference. And a lot of them were their age when they decided to get up and to go and say wrong is wrong and we're here to call it out and speak on behalf of those who may be too, too terrified or who may not be heard when they speak on behalf of themselves. That's absolutely awesome. We have a couple of minutes remaining. Um, you know, and as I think about again, as you're talking, I want to give you an opportunity to, again, just to briefly talk about the series. And you have one that's upcoming in January, the, uh, later this month, or in January, then another one, I believe. Uh, talk again, where's it going to be, the dates, the times, and, and things of that yeah. sort. Yeah. So on January 25th, from 5 to 7 p.m. in the Student Center, we will have the second event. And it features Mr. Leroy Clemens, who will come in and give a talk about the murder of the three civil rights workers in 1964 and what that did to the community and how they were able to, as a racially diverse group, bring the person who committed the murders to justice and bring about some racial healing for the city. And he will talk about how you begin to organize movements if you want to bring about change. Our third and final event that we're also very excited about is scheduled for February 17th. And that will also be held in the Student Center from 5 to 7 p.m. And we will highlight local activists who are young folks on the front line making a difference today. And our keynote is actually an EMU alum, Marcus Banks, who graduated from our Department of Political Science. And he is a part of a group called um, Black Attor or Attorneys for Black Lives Matter. And what this group does is train young people on how to successfully protest, how to do it the right way. And then if you need legal representation, where to go. But they also talk about it. They'll also talk about social issues in Detroit, social issues in Ipsy, and how people can begin to engage with some of the grassroots organizations to have an impact on society and the community. Is there a website that people can go to get more information? Yes, if you go to EMU, there is a website for the EMU Civil Rights and Social Justice Center, and it has information pertaining to our past events and upcoming future events as well. This is also, uh, as we wrap up, I got to say as well, well, this is 60 years, by the way, if you're tuning in, 60 years uh, for the, on the March on Washington from Dr. King, and people forget that he first gave that speech in Detroit in 1963, and then he went on, obviously, had that talk in the Washington, D.C. So this is truly a phenomenal, phenomenal program and experience. And Dr. Barbara Patrick, I want to thank you very much for your time. And this is awesome. That's, I'm, this is a wonderful experience. And congratulations for taking the lead on it. Oh, thank you so much. And thank you for the opportunity to share what we're doing with the center. Absolutely. In fact, as we wrap out this, as we wrap up this particular show, I would encourage you to participate Get a chance to educate yourself and continue to understand the historical context of our country and where we're going today and looking ahead to the future. All right, we will check you out next time on EMU Today TV. As always, have a great day, a great week, and we will see you soon. Bye.